Hello everybody and welcome to this video. Today I will be cleaning my 1UP mechanical keyboard that I got not that long ago. This is kind of a bit dirty and it could do with the clean basically. I will probably make this video into a how to clean your keyboard because I won't be doing anything that could damage your keyboard or anything like that. And before I begin I will just say this cleaning applies to mechanical keyboards only. Because as you can see there's a mechanical switch below each key. Like every key. When you're looking at a membrane keyboard, if you take the elongated keys such as the spacebar, shift key, enter key off, you would find a metal bar underneath the keys which you would like need to hook around a certain little clip on the keyboard and then like hook it around another certain little set of clips under the button and you need to get them all lined up and it's a lot of messing about but as you can see a mechanical keyboard does not have those metal bars which means it is a lot easier to take off clean and put on the elongated keys when compared to a membrane keyboard. If you do have a membrane keyboard you will probably want to look up a membrane keyboard cleaning video but now with all of that said the first thing I would say you need to do before you take all the keys off your keyboard is to get your phone or if you don't have a phone get a camera or something well yeah get a camera and simply just get a picture of the keyboard with all of the keys on the keyboard before you go ahead and take all the keys off I go and review that picture and make sure that it's not blurry and that you can see all the keys and stuff and yes I can see all the keys that is perfectly fine right so now I've taken a picture so I now know where all the keys are on the keyboard I mean I could just look up a reference photo but I know that this is how the keyboard was and it functions perfectly fine in this layout so I've got like a hard copy of the keyboard before I took it apart but before I took the keys off it now I will point out that the recommended way to remove the keys on your keyboard is to use a uh, keyboard key hook or whatever they're called those things that you slide down the side of each button and pull it up and it pulls a key off but I don't have one of those so I will just be using my fingers and if needed a flat headed screwdriver but I'm going to try not to use this because I don't want to damage any of the keys I'm not going to do it in any special order I'm probably just going to do it going along and then what whichever way I decide to do it and I've just realized I would recommend you get something to put all the keys in so you don't drop them and then end up losing them I've now got a box so I'm just simply going to put all of the keycaps in but for the sake of the thumbnail on the video I'm not actually going to put the keycaps in because I'm especially recording this for a video I want to get a, a picture of the keyboard with all of the keys removed but I want all of the keys to be above the keyboard in like the correct place on where they would be on the keyboard basically I want a picture of what you see in the thumbnail so I'm going to be creating that but if you're not doing a video therefore you won't need a thumbnail when you take the keys off just simply put them in the box let the time lapse begin Okay, welcome back to the video. As you will see, it took some considerable time getting them like that, but now I've got a picture for the thumbnail. I'll just put them all in the box. But there we go, there's all of the keys removed and here is the keyboard without all of the keys on it. It's not as clicky because the click echoes through the keys. But yes, as you can see, it is quite dirty, at least I consider it quite dirty. First thing I will be doing is brushing the loose bits of dust off with a paintbrush that I use for cleaning. So when you do this you might want to do it either outside or into the bin. So I'm just going to brush it all into my bin. Because it didn't look like there was much dust on there, it was mainly just like crumbs and stuff. 
Now, yeah, that looks fairly clean, at least regarding crumbs and stuff that's on it. Okay, so now I'm going to go and get a damp cloth. I've just put normal tap water on it. You don't want it soaking wet because at the end of the day it is an electronic and electronics and water don't usually mix. So I'm just going to go and get a damp cloth and then just wipe off the uh, bits in between the keys. And for the these bits here, I'll probably get a Q-tip and just like dip that in some water and then press it on a towel to get rid of most of the moisture. And then just go about cleaning in between all the individual keys. Or alternatively, what you could just use is some isopropyl alcohol. At the time of recording, I completely forgot I even owned isopropyl alcohol. So yeah, what I would say better than like a damp cloth with water on it is either a damp cloth with isopropyl alcohol on it, or you can even put some isopropyl alcohol in like a little tub or something or like a little cup or a bowl or something and get a paintbrush and literally just brush the entire keyboard surface with isopropyl alcohol. But if you do decide to do that brush method that I just said, do make sure that all of the isopropyl alcohol has completely evaporated before you put the keys back on. Here I've got some water and a Q-tip which I will use after. And here I've got a damp cloth, so with the damp cloth I'm just going to rub over the main bits of the keyboard. Oh yeah, and I've also got a flannel to dry it. Right, I'm just going to get the Q-tip, dip it in the water, and just clean it in between the keys. Okay, if you ask me, there is the main part of the keyboard is uh, cleaned to a level that I am happy with, except from that hair that's still there. Where is it? Now the hair's gone. There's the keyboard part of the keyboard without the keys, cleaned to a level that I'm happy with. I guess I can clean the cable, that's going to be simple enough. Just simply get the cloth, get the cable, and just clean it like this, and then dry it. Now, I need to clean the keys. So that's going to require a sink, or a shower, or something. I'm going to use the bathroom sink, but that's me. So now, you want to take your keys into the bathroom. So the next thing you will want to do is probably... In fact, will keys actually slip down there? Yep, they will. So you want to make sure that your keys don't go down the edge. So if you've got one of these modern plugs where you just push it, then you'll want to make sure that it's pushed down. Or if you've got an old fashioned plug, or well no, I guess you do still have them. Basically you want to do something to the plug to make sure the keys don't fall down it. So I'm going to put the plug in, uh, put some water in, add a drop of soap. It can be cold, warm water, whatever. Just make sure you don't burn yourself if the water's too hot. Then just get your keys and just pour them all in. And just, well, move them about in the water. That's a kind of satisfying noise. Now the most annoying part about doing this is drying them. So I'm just going to let them sit here for a few minutes and then I'll get back to them after those few minutes. So I've left the keys in here now for probably longer than what I should have. Well, definitely longer than what's needed. But now what you want to try and do is get something that you can put the keys in that will allow the water to drain. Unless you've got a plug that's uh, not big enough for the keys to fall down, I guess. I, I know some older plugs had like a sort of grate thing on them on where you could easily just pull the plug out and the keys wouldn't fall down but unfortunately with modern plugs we don't have that and now in order to get the soap off the keys I'll just rinse all the keys oh, oh, dear. oh. Oh, I've got water all over the floor. Okay, I'm going to do this bit in the shower. Now, once you've washed all the soap off the keys and you've let the keys drain, then you just need to get a towel and just empty the keys out onto the towel. Now, you've got different options here. You can either 
leave the keys here and just let the water evaporate as it would normally or you could choose to use a hairdryer but if you are going to use a hairdryer I would say it would probably be better to put all the keys back into a container and then use a hairdryer on its slowest speed because if you use it on like its higher speed then you will want to make sure that as you're drying them the keys don't just fly out so I have the keys here or at least the ones that didn't fall out on the way here I have the hairdryer plugged in ready to use I have been thinking it's probably better if you put the keys into a taller container whereas with this one it's okay if you only use a few keys at once but if you put them all in then you're probably going to have keys flying out and because they're all packed in together there won't be as much surface area that's been like covered by the hairdryer therefore they'll take longer to dry and you don't want to melt the keys either it is a bit later in the day all of the keys have dried some of which have already well sort of sorted out i've got the f keys here the like main button keys across here uh what's that that's a one so that will go with the button keys and then sort of what these are here is this number pad but the majority of them are still over here so I'm just going to go ahead and put the keys back on. I do have the picture up on my computer screen, which as of this recording location is over there. So I can see which keys go where, even though it's fairly obvious. Right, here we go. Let's begin putting them on. Okay, so that took long enough. Halfway through, when you saw me like counting the keys, I thought I'd lost some keys, but I haven't, obviously. So now I need to plug my keyboard back in and confirm that the keys are in the correct place. UIOP, QWERTY UIOP, yes. Yep, that works. Yep, uh, they all seem to work. Now yesterday when I recorded the actual video that I'm editing at the moment, I forgot to show you the keyboard after I had cleaned it. So this is what the keyboard looks like after I've cleaned it. And I know they probably won't focus on that bit. Oh, there we go. You can see it's now all nice and clean I mean it may actually have a few little marks on it as I did record and clean the keyboard yesterday but as you can see it all looks near enough clean and apologies for the light flickering that's to do with the um, to do with the shutter speed on the camera not working correctly with the lights as the lights are like pulsing but they pulse that quickly that the human eye can't really detect it but a camera shutter can but yeah there's a keyboard, now it's been cleaned. So it turns out I've recorded the outro three times, but it turns out the camera wasn't even recording, so I've just been speaking to no one. Anyway, that is it for this video. I have cleaned the keyboard, taken all the keys off, washed them, cleaned the keyboard base bit, put all the keys back on, plugged it in and made sure it's working. So far, everything seems to be working fine. But that is it for this video. So if you have enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, then give it a thumbs down. Comment, favorite, share and subscribe. And thank you for watching and I shall speak to you in the next video.